<laughs> there you go, get in. <laughs> Allow me. Why, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to my car last story. It's very nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for joining me. It's very nice in this big spaceship you've got here. <laughs> yeah, I, did. I thought, I, you know what, I was like, what car can I get for the Tesla Model X? A little bit far out, a little bit chilled, a little bit different. Yeah? I approve. You approve? I very much I'm do. I'm glad. Let's do this, right? So, what I would, would like to do is drive you to where Bigger Fish started, right? So, you are the CEO mm -hmm. of Bigger Fish, which, if anyone doesn't know, is a youth music education organization. For the last 20 years, empowering young people. Perfect. So I thought I would kind of take you back to where it. Way back. Way, way, way back. Back to the future, Daddy. Mm. In a spaceship, right? In our spaceship. <laughs> to where it first started. So, and then as we're going back, we take a trip through your life. How does that sound? Good? Sounds good. Let's do this, right? Let's do it. Okay. Be a good driver. <laughs> so quiet. Is that the first thing that you noticed? Now the first thing I noticed was uh, there was no door handles on, really on the whole car. Oh, there isn't, is there? Yeah. But you don't need it because when you're the, the driver, you're the host in this car, so you get to let everybody in and out of this vehicle. And this windscreen. I think it's the windscreen, I think, is my favourite feature on it so far. Yeah? Yeah. It's the largest windscreen in a production vehicle. So, Go with Tesla. It, I know it, it actually is one of my favorite things as well because it just makes you feel like you're in out. <laughs> it's like being in a cockpit. It, exactly, exactly. So, this is for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's get into Bigger Fish, right? So, this is a youth led organization, probably really well timed because um, our youth are in crisis at the moment. So companies like you are, are really important. So what, when 20 years ago, when you decided to start from Bigger Fish, what was the motivation then? I was, um, I was working for a pop group called All Saints. You remember them? Heard of them, yes. Yeah, so um, they were like the credible version of Towards the Spice Girls, like, and uh, I was picking up like they dry cleaning or mm, something do. like that as you do and uh, besides the dry cleans was a youth centre <coughs> which is where we're going to now and uh, the youth worker said oh, you never guess what the police came in and wanted to set up a surveillance operation on the top of the youth centre to catch out local young people right and uh, it just struck me as wrong and you know then like you get a thought going in your head and that thought was saying that maybe you should do something about it and not wait for someone else to do something about it. So, to the DJ workshop, that went really well. Spoonie, DJ Spoonie, even, even all those years back he was like top of the game still and uh, he came down and uh, helped in the workshops and then we did an MC workshop and Skibbity came down and um, and the MC workshop, both of them were oversubscribed and then the MC said like, what's the point? We haven't got anywhere to perform. So we did, um, we organized an event in uh, the community center, which is at the end of the road to where the youth center was. And uh, it was completely rammed out. The sound system turned up after the people got there. Didn't know what I was doing. Wrapped the whole like inside of like the, this like little hall with like orange plastic because my thing back then was like yeah like branding color like so bigger fish was going to be orange we had orange t-shirts so i got all of this building plastic and uh wrapped it all inside complete fire hazard if it had ever like anyone would ever put a match or a cigarette to it like we would have all been cooked in there but it all went off without a hitch and 
um, that was like the first of like many events and now like 300,000 young people through our programs um, we run programs in Birmingham, London, Manchester we've done up to eight cities in any given year um, training young people to organize and produce events and providing a platform for like up and coming emerging artists um, and yeah just being being something that is an inspiration and um, an opportunity for young people um, who need that kind of like influence within mm. their lives. What kind of backgrounds do the kids come from? Everywhere. Like I've had like I've had like university students, like what you call like just like young people who just maybe want to make new friends. There's young people who uh, are looking for like different opportunities or want to get into the, the creative industries but then there's also like there's those who are seeking positive things in their lives you know um, like maybe have like like challenging situations at home and then there's like the others who are like really like in the kind of road like aspect of life like kidnappers kidnappers of kidnappers <laughs> you know like it's like bigger fish has always been a mix like we always say that we just take you as as we find you and then provide everyone with the opportunity if they want to get involved and they want um it's kind of like if you take one step towards fish like it will take two steps towards you mm -hmm. like if you put effort in it will reward you with more opportunity so yeah, but we've worked in prisons. Uh, I've worked in maybe eight or nine prisons around the country, maybe 70, 80 secondary schools, maybe 25 like colleges. Um, worked with maybe 10 different pupil referral units and like maybe another 10 youth offending like services. So I've seen quite a, a good amount of the system and how young people are processed through the system and. Um, just really what's working and what's not working. So what would you say is not working? All of it. <laughs> All of it. And like you can apply logic to it to, to really, I'm, a, I'm like even though I work within the creative sector, I like to apply logic and to the understanding and it's like a really simple thing if you think that like there's any given year there's over a billion pounds spent in London on youth services of one sort, whether it's schools, like youth services, after after school activities, like scouts, like you just name it, there's a lot of activities placed to put on for young people. And if the crime rate is still rising, then you have to you have to come to the, the summation that all of it, the total of it is not meeting the total of the of the problem. So you then have to look at actually have you understood the problems like in medicine if you keep tre treating the symptoms you never really get like you can miss what the cause is and never deal with the cause and I think that's really where we're at is it's, it's that time now where people have to see actually what we've been doing doesn't work and there's some fundamental reasons why it doesn't work what are the key factors that you that you see that ties all these young people together um, <clears throat> so I think I think it's, it's tricky because once you start picking at it you can you, you have to question a lot more of it so like I was just having a conversation uh, with a guy and who's um, looking at what school to send his daughter to for secondary school and we were talking about how well school prepares people for the real world and it's arguable that it doesn't really. It doesn't teach them about finance, doesn't teach them about relationships, doesn't teach them about sustainable, like self-sufficiency. So already the child is is kind of like is being challenged in terms of like its ability to be successful in the world. And then when you consider that that child is like with that entity, the education entity, for 40 hours a week, it's a lot of time. And so what they're doing is they're they're spending a lot of time rewiring their brain to the left side of the brain which is the logical side to be able to store information to be able to process information and hold it so they can do exams but actually the left side of the the right side of their brain the creative side the analytical the problem solving the entrepreneurial side 
is being like kind of reduced and and not like not stretched properly. So all the neurons aren't cre aren't creating the pathways and people aren't necessarily sharp in that way so it's great if you want people to go into like service industries mm. where they don't have to really think too much about their about their role but if you want to like have a, the, the most the, that the potential of the person has you should be like really encouraging the right side as well mm. and so when you look at things like the creative industries again if you look at the numbers the creative industries is like one of the largest growing I think it's that it is the largest growing uh, um, industry in the British economy at the moment. I think like 2016, it grew by like 11 percent. So, which is like kind of unheard of, really, across the like way the growth of the country is going. So, and you can see it now with like all of the grime and urban artists and the music and how that's all explore like exploding and it's doing kind of what happened in the 90s for hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting that kind of and and the Silicon Valley and all of that. That's now because people who've got creative minds are getting a little bit of resources and the technologies enable them to have more access to opportunity and to get their stuff out there and be a bit more independent the market is like growing mm -hmm. so really that's where for me is where young people should be like encouraged to like play and learn and grow and earn in mm -hmm. is in what can you as an individual create and contribute to society that is going to be beneficial, generate income for you. You mentioned rhyme there. So what's your perception of drill music and its influence on, on young people? <coughs> drill is just an expression of young people's lives. Mm, you know, <coughs> I think like any relationship, if you truly want to like perceive it, is a reflection of yourself. <laughs> You know, and and I think children are the best reflection of what we as a society are doing to them or what we're providing for them or what their experience is. And drill is just, people don't like it because it's an extreme reflection, but it's a truthful reflection because either way, that's where that young person is at, whether they're trying to glamorize it or whether they're living it like both of those things should be big enough flags for people to have a problem with, uh, with it but anyone really like it when you're talking about the authorities and that trying to blame that for the music bl blame the music for or create a relationship between the two you can't really those people can't actually open their mouth until they talk about the cuts in the youth service okay like you can't really say you're offended or upset about why like what this is doing <laughs> when, like, pretty much, I think every youth service in London has been cut by like 70, 80, 90 percent. Mm -hmm. So they they kind of feel like crocodile tears for me. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, like I, I I think anyone who is serious about um, wanting to make change for young people needs to have really looked at what they what their contribution is in it. Like on a day-to-day -day basis, what are you doing for young people? Let alone like, what do you what like the masses? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think I think I think that people people know what the real issues are. Like they know when they cut the youth service that there's going to be a a, a representative shift in violence. Like it's not the first time this has happened. This is like I think the second or third cycle I've been around for where the youth services have been through cuts. So each time it happens, there's a spike in youth violence, which is only part of it, but it, it kind of signals you can't have a problem and then not have any infrastructure to address the problem. Like if there's a fire, they have the fire brigade. If there's, you know, like crime, they have the police. So if there's young people, what do you have?